Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna do some pruning on my dwarf apple trees here. We have two rows of them. In fact, they're planted in double rows. There's two trees per hole. Um, and in between the rows, um, sorry, within the row is a three foot spacing. So it's really dense. And this is really the only way I'd sort of recommend as a backyard grower that we grow our dwarf trees. Um, it's very dense spacing because if you give them too much room, you just don't get a whole lot of production for that space that you give it. Um, they're meant to be grown very close together like this. Um, if I were to do this all over again, and if I knew what I knew now, I would put them all on the same rootstock, obviously. Uh, we didn't really know that, and this wasn't our goal in the beginning, wasn't to create these two rows here. Um, so they are on different dwarfing rootstocks, but in general, I wouldn't even put them on a dwarfing rootstock. I would have one tree right here in the center, and I would graft all these different varieties onto them. Um, these trees are quite young in terms of their life now in the ground. This is only their second year, or this will be our, our second year coming up, because I planted them last spring. Um, actually around this time, last year. So they're gonna be in their one year mark now. But some of them have been growing in containers for quite some time. And I have sort of been developing them. If you look at these two trees here, I've already been sort of developing them to go in their own certain direction so that when we look down this row, we have one tree, we have two trees in the same hole, but one of them's going off to the right and one of them's going off to the left. And that's sort of how we developed them in our pots anyway. Um, so it kind of makes sense in that sense of how we're doing this now in that I want to pretty much push all the growth to the left or to the right and not have a lot of this growing towards the center because um, I don't want this too dense and we do need to be careful about what we prune but for the most part I'm just going to be very closely paying attention to my objectives for this season which are simply to get as much production out of these apples as I can because I don't really like this system I have here. I'm not gonna be here forever. I don't plan on really keeping all these trees. Maybe I could, I could turn them all into a standard by burying the, uh, the rootstock and then burying the, the scion, the stem, and then turning them into a standard. I guess that's possible. But I don't really uh, like this whole thing. And, and really this is sort of just serving as a, see how much fruit I can get in a small space taste all the different varieties I have here. I have about 30 varieties because I have quite a few graphs. So by doing our winter pruning, uh, right now, because it's the winter, it's in February, guys. Uh, if I do a lot of pruning now, we're only simply encouraging growth the next year. We're gonna get a lot of water shoots, um, a lot of just very vigorous growth, which could be good depending on the age and your objective of the tree. But for me, I want to try to get some fruit. So we're going to do very light pruning now. And then in the summer, I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to do a summer pruning. And that's going to induce a lot of spurs. And then the following year is really where I'm going to get uh, a lot of fruit because the spurs are where the fruit forms on these apple trees. Same thing with uh, other fruit trees as well, is that you have to look along the branches here, usually on the uh, two or three year old wood, you'll see spurs that have formed. They're like these little nubs that come out of the branch or out of that main stem. And they look kind of strange. And you may think, what are these things? But those are going to be flowers very soon. They're going to flower, put out probably five or six flowers per spur. We can't keep five or six flowers because that'll be five or six apples. <laughs> and that's just too many. So we could maybe thin that down to one or two. But in, as a sense, if I really want as many apples as I can get, or as much production as I can get, I'm going to be particularly trying to get as many spurs and uh, preserve as many spurs as I can. So as an example here, we have a variety here I grafted called Sweet 16, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I have about 11 spurs on this tree, that's plenty. I like how it's already branched out a bit, but I'm gonna come back in here even further. I'm gonna prune this to an outward growing bud. 
We're just gonna bring back the height just a little bit on some of this. This is a variety here called Golden Russet. I don't see many spurs on this particular variety, so that's unfortunate. But I am gonna bring it back as well, and we're just going to pretty much mindlessly just bring back the height um, just a tad, and it really is a bit unfortunate because I probably should have done this in the summer and I would have more apples that way. Um, here's a variety that's sort of in the center of the tree and it's grafted quite high. So I'm not even going to prune this. Maybe I'll just take off the apical bud. Another variety down here is pruned. We have the rootstock of this, I think is... Uh, unfortunately red delicious so there's a lot of spurs down low and i could if i really wanted to come in here and take out all these spurs on the on the red delicious because in a sense that's just a crappy apple and i'd rather have more spurs on the sweet 16 fruit than on the bottom uh, of the tree here so i guess what i could do is come in here in the spring notice what's going to flower and then make a decision on that um, let's move on to the next varieties here just keep going this is all right this is all right but i think this one up here is just too high we'll bring that that height back i don't know what variety this is this is uh enterprise i believe and i have state fair here on the left this guy looks pretty good I don't think we're really going to mess with them. Just a little bit off the top, just a tad off the top. Um, overall, the spurs are still here, but there isn't a whole lot off of this tree. So a bit of a shame. We do have some growth down here that I can also bring back because this is really going towards the center here. Um, this stuff's really starting to encroach. So maybe I should bring a lot of this back just for that purpose. I think we will save that spur down there this system of branches all right I bring this back cut that back to a spur I'm gonna cut this whole thing out so we're just bringing the height back a little bit in in towards the center here the center of the two rows I should say keep going we'll just take out some of the height This one's kind of growing towards the middle of the tree, but I'm going to leave this for now and see if I can get this to branch out in the right way. And maybe we'll keep it. Maybe we'll take it out in a future year. There's some dead wood. Turn that back just, just a smidge. Again, too much height on these trees. And I, I just wanted them last year. My objective for these was to just get them to grow, just put out as much growth as possible, get them to dig in because when we plant a tree, we transplant a tree from a container into the ground or from the ground and then into the ground, we just moved them somewhere. Um, I think it's really important to let them do their thing, let them dig in. I didn't want to force them to do any sort of uh, fruiting in that first year. I figured that was a nice benefit, but now that we're entering the second year, um, I think they're kind of dug in now. I can deal with this a little bit, change my objectives around. I'm also looking for dead wood, by the way. If I see anything like that, I already pruned out the, some of the dead wood in this tree. I also don't like how this one's growing towards the other tree there, which is really quite small compared to the rest of the, in this planting. I don't know what happened to that one, but uh, out of the 20 trees, that one's the only one that's really not doing so hot. Um, here's some more growth and things growing towards the center. I'm just going to cut all this out because that's just not what you want in a planting like this, guys. But most of all, for the most part, I should say, this is all looking pretty good up to my standards here and my objectives this is all right some of this is some damage down here at the bottom that's unfortunate um just for me coming in here with the wheelbarrow and putting down some wood chips it's pretty cold out here today guys 
Uh, that's a good day to do some pruning. <laughs> um, you know, it's a good sign, obviously, that these trees are dormant. That's the most important factor here. So you really want them to be dormant and then well dormant, you know. That's why we're not doing this shortly after the fall, but sort of in the dead of winter or towards the beginning of spring. And, uh, yeah, this tree is a bit strange, huh? But I think I'm just going to leave it alone and do some summer pruning. And then we didn't do this tree here, but we're just going to bring back some of this height. And even just bringing back this height is going to encourage, you know, a lot of new shoots. Um, this is some pretty hard pruning in terms of, you know, focusing on trying not to get this these stuff to really grow but instead to fruit i think that's kind of um we're sort of doing what we didn't want to do but really in the summer is where this is all going to make sense in terms of getting our spurs to form here i like this tree this tree is covered in spurs actually um i do see Looks like some kind of insect overwintering on this. And what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to spray this stuff with the dormant oil. All these trees here will get the spray. Um, and that's going to really help get these guys back onto their feet. Because that was something I really saw their first year in after planting them here. There was a lot of pest pressure, especially from aphids. They seemed very weak, and the weaker trees on your property get targeted the most by pests. I mean, that's just something I've really noticed over the years. And um, it just really becomes apparent to you, and you realize you have just a weaker tree, um, and you just have to take care of it. So for me, I'm uh, gonna be helping these guys out, spraying the dormant oil pretty soon. And I'll do a video coming out on that to show you guys how that's all going to work out. Um, pretty simple. I actually have myself a horticultural oil that I prefer to use because you can use that anytime. I'm cutting these branches back to a spur right now. I'm trying to just bring back the height or cut them back to a spur. That's really my objectives here. And um, that's really it. We'll do that summer pruning, like I said. And the summer pruning is very similar to this in that we're bringing back the height, but it's, real, it's mindless. We're just really, at a certain height, cutting back all these trees, and that's going to induce that spur growth that we want. Remember, if anything's growing towards the center, you can cut that out. In this particular style of planting, this one's growing in towards the other tree. This one's growing in towards the other tree. And I'll come back and I'll kind of assess that. Like I'm noticing right here, this tree is sort of growing into the other tree. So we'll bring that back. This guy is such a strange branch in general. It's growing pretty much straight towards the ground. All right, let's keep going here. We're almost done. My wire is stuck. Now this guy is pretty much off <laughs> leaning, which is not good. So we need to uh, come in here and actually get this guy straightened up again. Otherwise he looks pretty good, believe it or not. This is a broken branch here. I think I may have just broken that one. Here's some dead wood. All right, guys, so I think you get the picture. I think you guys get the idea of what it is I'm trying to achieve with these trees this year. Um, pretty simple, isn't it? Isn't it? We're almost done. I think that's all we're gonna do and some of these I'm just thinning out you know taking the one out in the center if there's three of them you know leave the two on the end and cut the one in the center but uh, that's basically it guys 
So I want to thank everybody out there who's watching right now. I've stuck to the end. I want to thank you guys just for watching in general, but getting this far. And um, I think all these trees look pretty good. So I want to suggest that you guys check us out on Fig Boss. Hope you guys subscribe, like the video, and uh, we'll see you guys soon, all right? Take care, everybody.